where there's smoke, there's usually somebody smoking and there's smoking hot fire. <laughs> and Dan Patrick, the legend, broke. Well, he he likes to say we don't break news, we sprain news. It's like San Diego <laughs> State is going to go to the Pac-12. That uh, is expected, at least according to my source, to be announced this week. But San Diego State to the Pac-12. All right, see. I used to listen to Dan Patrick all the time. And so when he says something like, okay, I get it. He's not the most like breaking news type of radio personality, but he is a legend. He's all the way in Bristol, Connecticut. You know what I mean? Like that's on the opposite side of the country, way up in the corner. We're down here, down south. So for news to travel that far about the Aztecs joining the Pac-12, I mean, man, that caught everybody off guard. Even though we've all heard the rumblings that the Aztecs are going to be potentially added to the Pac-12, um, you know, man, it set us up all on fire, right? All San Diego was just questioning, is it going to happen this week? Is it going to happen? I think it's pretty safe to say it's most likely not going to happen this week. It doesn't seem to really make sense for the timing. But I think it's coming, guys. It, it's got to be here sooner or later. Um, you know, to have, like I said, this news travel that far, there's no coincidence. I, I think, you know, UCLA it has that remote chance this week that the chancellors kind of tell them you have to go back to the Pac-12. But I think either way, regardless, Pac-12, they need to add San Diego State. They, they are probably at the point where they probably want to at this point. What do you guys think about that when you heard the news? Dan Patrick, of all people. I think it's because if you've seen all the news since then, everybody's trying to walk it back. Right. Yeah. Now. And I think he had something. I think he has something. What I think he has is that the Pac-12 was meeting last week. They discussed expansion. They probably came to agreement that if we are going to expand, let's expand with SDSU or San Diego State. Um, now, did that mean that an offer is coming this week? I think that's where most people's uh, uh, disagreement comes with. But what I think is going on right now, so you saw a little bit of J.D. Wh uh, Wicker last night at the stadium when he was interviewed. He mentioned how they're talking to multiple conferences. He, he's so noncommittal, right? And then you read um, John Wilner's uh, article tonight or earlier this afternoon where he says, yeah, you know, SCSU is a good candidate, but now I'm going to put SMU as a co-candidate or the co-top team. What I think is going on right now is I think it's negotiation. Mm -hmm. Like um, San Diego State, and they're negotiating the shares, how much of a share they're going to get early on and how quickly. Um, SCSU is trying to play up that, hey, we might have some options too. So, you know, if you don't give us something that we want, we could go there. And now I think that the PAC 12 feels like they lost some leverage with the Dan Patrick stuff. So they're, they go to their people, which is Kanzano and Wilner. They're basically a voice for the commissioner. And now they're trying to walk it back. They're trying to say, we like San Diego state, but we don't like them that much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think, you know, it's fair. They're all kind of playing the game, but I think it's because if you read the Casano article about a week ago, where he said that we were having a dance. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're, they're probably going through the, the terms and it's, um, you know, they're trying to each other's trying to play their hand. So I think it's there. I think they'll probably come to an agreement and it'll be fine, but I think that's where we're probably at night right now. Yeah. That um, I, I follow that TJ Altimore guy. I don't know if you guys follow him on Twitter. He's like yeah, a, an analyst. Yeah. Um, and he kind of mentioned that when it when it was leaked out, I think Kanzano is the one who leaked it out that San Diego State had hired a consulting firm to help them negotiate with a conference. He, he, that guy mentioned on Twitter, he's like, those consulting firms don't put their name out there unless it's like a done deal. They try to stay like secretive as hell. Like they don't want their names to be out there unless like this is pretty far down the road, like it's almost a done deal. So he's, yeah. he's of the opinion that it's like, it's, it's a done deal. It's just like Dan said, they're kind of, you know, putting the, the bow on things. And I'm sure that's also part of it is dealing with the, the media partners as well. 
saying, you know, negotiating, like, look, we're going to bring in San Diego State. Like, what does this do to our bottom line? Like, how does this affect us? And that's all part of the dance Dan was talking about. So the, the, they, the Pac-12 keeps saying they're going to come out, they're going to come out with the media deal first and then expansion. That's not the way it works, man. They're going to they're gonna know exactly who they're going to choose before they come to the agreement on the media deal. Um, because that's all going to be kind of negotiated in with the media deal. They're not going to come up with a deal and then, okay, well, we're going to add these two teams. Let's start the negotiation all over again. Yeah, I think it's like the, the main issue is not so much that we're getting invited, it's the, the timeline. I think that's what everybody has the biggest problem with is, is Dan Patrick. I think maybe he, he probably has a good source from, from inside the meetings last week, like Dan said, and I'm sure they told him like, Hey, it's, they voted on it. It's San Diego state's in, but I think just the timeline, maybe he may be off on that. It may be a little too soon. And in the timeline, it could even be like, I was saying like San Diego state might not even know they're in, you know, like, um, they know they're in. <laughs> They no, I don't I mean they don't they may not know. They may not have told them. You know, like they may have said they don't maybe maybe they don't know what happened in the vote or whatever. They don't they don't want to give them too much leverage, dude, because if it's if they seem like a slam dunk, I mean, because look, we're not gonna get a full share of the first year. You know, we're probably not gonna get a full share of the second. So this is what it's coming down to, dude. I'm yeah. telling you, it's so how much money that San Diego State is gonna get in that in this contract. And by, by saying, oh, yeah, everybody voted, you guys overwhelming. Yeah, you guys are, you guys are in. No, you don't, dude, that's not, you're not playing the game right here. Yeah. I think it's, it's more like, dude, Dan Patrick, why did you say that? You know, like, <laughs> kind of, we kind of lost some leverage. And, yeah. uh, and you, and you saw like them now, now all of a sudden SMU is just as good as an option as San Diego State <laughs> only today. No. <laughs> Never saw that once. Now it's only today. Now yeah. It's no, video. nobody believes that, dude. Nobody believes that. Well, I'll tell you who believes that. Jason Shear believes that. He <laughs> believes that. Let's talk a little bit about that, though, because that's if that's oh, truly dude. where the position is in this dance, is that now both sides have got to figure out, okay, well, how how much do we want San Diego State? Like, how good of a fit is San Diego State in the Pac-12? I went on a I went on a tangent last week, right? I was like, we got to be in the Big 12, this and that, da, da, da. Of course, that's, you know, dealing with my emotions and my heart. But the most logical, logical expansion spot for the Pac-12 to go is San Diego. It's Southern California. So for anybody to downgrade that, that value of bringing in that Southern California market when you've lost USC and UCLA, like, I can't take you seriously if you're seriously going to say the Pac-12 is better as a Pac-10 without any presence in Southern California. Like, come on, Jason. Come on. To the, the Deseret News did a little article tonight. They asked Whittingham what he thought about them adding San Diego State. And he said that'd be huge. Like, that'd be big because they need to maintain that recruiting presence in Southern California. I think Talk Utah knows a little bit better than Arizona in football terms how much that recruiting grows. Yeah, yeah, and, and Arizona knows too. The only one who says otherwise is that dude who's a basketball guy, man, Sheer, the, the guy we had on earlier this year. Because I, like I talked about with him when we did the podcast, it was like Arizona tried recruiting Texas in, right. in Oklahoma, and it was a disaster. They were terrible. And they had to go back to California. They went back recruiting heavily in California, and – if they go to the Big 12, they're, they're going to lose that California connection. Yeah, dude. Anybody who says with a straight face that San Diego State isn't a good, isn't the best addition outside of obviously another Power 5 school to the Big 12, they're, they're just speaking nonsense. You can't take them seriously. So, I mean, we've talked about it a, a little bit already, how San Diego as a market, they fit naturally in the Pac-12. I mean, you're talking about pro sports on every level in pro sports. When San Diego had their teams, they were perfectly aligned in divisions with teams like Seattle Seahawks, the Denver Broncos, the Dodgers, the Giants, you know, all the different Bay Area teams, the L.A. teams. San Diego fits perfectly in the pro ranks in those divisions. So college football is the only college sports is the only <laughs> the only sports that San Diego is not included in those regional matchups, in those rivalry matchups. If we were to join the Pac-12 this week, like what Dan Patrick says, obviously we know it's not going to happen. But if we were to join this week, 
who would instantly be our most hated rival in the Pac-12, guys? Ooh, you're not including USC and, and UCLA, <laughs> right? No. Hey, but hey, let me before before we tackle this. Yeah. Like, um, I see that's another thing is I think SDSU gets in even if UCLA doesn't go. You have you have the Wilners that are saying like, oh, they would no, dude. I think UCLA would need someone in Southern California as well. Absolutely. Um, so I, I, you know, like they try to scare you by saying, "Oh, you better hope UCLA." I don't really hope UCLA goes, dude. Honestly, yeah. I kind of hope they stay. That'd be cool. Yeah, and I think that would be that would be the rival. Rival, you know. Absolutely. Now, but now UCLA would say, "Oh no, Berkeley's our rival." You know. No. Yes and no. But, yes and no. But <laughs> I, I love. Bill Walton this past week on the Kanzano Wilner podcast, he railed against the Pac-12 for, well, against he railed against UCLA for taking this move to the Big Ten, and he said, you know, taking the Midwest money. It's like there's nothing in the Midwest for an LA team. Like, what do we need to go out there for money for? Like, we're on the West Coast. Figure it out. <laughs> like, I, I really enjoy what he had to say, and of course, Bill Walton being that San Diego guy, lives here, loves it here. Um, born and raised here, so I would love to see UCLA. He did not. He did not. He did not. I I will say that because the the topic at hand for him, he's a Bruin, right? He wants to. He's on fire. He hates that UCLA is going to leave the Pac-12. He's a Pac-12 guy, so that wasn't a point in the conversation. This was, you know, before all of this with Dan Patrick and all that. But I would have no reservations to to think that Bill Walton wouldn't you know he would want san diego state to be elevated to the pac-12 alongside that Dude, he's conference. been a, i mean he's been a pretty big figure at, at the basketball games in the past and obviously his son went there and yeah um, yeah chris chris walton like, mm -hmm. i was wondering I, I didn't i didn't listen to the podcast i just read his letter which his letter was pretty awesome i mean yeah. it was it was their promotion of what was coming the next day was way overblown and it was somewhat embarrassing yeah. when, they, like, when Wilner says, Oh, it feels like a big news day or, and then cause I'm going to drop a bomb tomorrow or whatever. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it was just, way exaggerated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think they're gone. I, I don't think the region's not going to force them to stay. Cause you're talking about a significant difference in money and they're already kind of cash trapped I think what's going to happen is they're going to try to extort some money out of UCLA to help Cal. <laughs> well, that's the, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. But that's a point, depending on what the TV contract ends up in, if you have to pay Cal 10 million a year too, at what point does it like, is it, is it not a benefit to go play in the, the big 10? I mean, I don't think it's going to happen, but you know, if they say, Hey, you have to subsidize Cal. Man, if I'm UCLA, I'm thinking, dude, I have to subsidize Cal. Plus, we got to send all of our sports, you know, to the Midwest and then some in the East Coast. Like, but here's another thing you have to think about. Also, is what would be the Big Ten's reaction should that happen? I think it takes Stanford. They could just say, okay, well then we'll just take Stanford, Cal, UCLA, and USC. <laughs> I can't see Stanford making that move, though. I mean, they're more hardline against those complaints that Walton had for UCLA. I mean, yeah. they're even more about their education and about their student athletes not having to travel and putting through all that. You know, but did you guys even read more. That, you guys didn't read that Stanford article today by any chance? No. no. Where the, the AD is talking about what a deficit their athletic budget is, and they either got to cut some sports mm -hmm. or, you know, make some more money. Pretty much. Um, I mean, wow. obviously, Stanford needing more money, but it's a different budget. So, yeah. I yeah. It. They say the endowment, like 80% of it, you can't touch. And then, like, um, there's all these rules. You just can't, like, take money from there. <laughs> like, yeah. um, it's got to be worth it. And athletics are not worth dipping in. Well, no. That. And I mean, but, a lot of that, that endowment money is like when rich people die, they leave their money to Stanford mm -hmm. and they have specific things they want that money. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like written into the endowment. So yeah, it's it's they can't just grab some of that. What is what is their endowment like a billion dollars or something like that? <laughs> mm, probably more. <laughs> so. but, dude, but say if, but say they did take another team with USC. You know, say it's Oregon or whatever. I think I I'd rather have UCLA than Stanford, Cal. Yeah. Um, 
maybe even Oregon, just because of the regional aspect of it. To be honest, I don't think USC wants Oregon in the Big Ten. I think they would. No, I think USC would be perfectly fine going by themselves. Yeah, I don't think they wanted UCLA in the in the deal to begin with. So I think Big Ten, you know, is probably it's a requirement. But I I see uh, I would see SDSU being a good pair with UCLA in the Pac-12. Of course, they they would hate it. Of course, uh, I think everybody in the Pac-12. Whittingham liked SDSU. Yeah. Doing- yeah. 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 I think he's the only one probably in, in the whole conference. Everybody else would be kind of looking down at San Diego State, which, hey, I mean, they bring it, you know, bring it. Let's go. They'd look down, but they still, I think they're all, if you ask all the coaches, they're happy. They would be happy with San Diego State joining because that makes it easier to recruit Southern California because you can at least point to that game. Like, look, your whole family can still come see you play once every three years or whatever the hell it is, four years. Um, you'll still get a game back home in front of your family yeah. every now and then. So, yeah, dude, it's a, uh, but back to your original question, like, okay, say UC, USC and UCLA both leave, who do I think would be the rival for us? Um, I would probably say most likely, like, but here, here's the thing. I would say Arizona, but I don't, we could never be the equal of ASU to them. So we would yeah, never, right, right. Um, so maybe like, I don't know, Utah or Colorado, one of those two most likely would become like our de facto rival. Utah, the longtime Mountain West and WAC member that that we really actually historically were were pretty close on wins and losses with them. Yeah. What about you, Dan? Who do you think would be our rival in the UCA, USC UCLA list Pac-10, Pac-12? It's kind of, it's kind of it is kind of a tough question because they're just and not... it's tough because they all have their natural rivals already. Yeah. yeah. Like, so because you're gonna have Berkeley, Oregon, and Stanford, um, Oregon, Oregon State, and then it's still Oregon and Washington too. Yeah. They hate each other. Um, I mean, it's not, I think it's a whatever rival shit, maybe SMU, you know, maybe <laughs> a, a team that you come in with because otherwise it's just going to, it's something that's going to, it's going to have to be a game where it rips the other team's soul out and then you guys hate each other. Like, yeah. It needs to happen organically. Like, yeah. That, you could make a case for ASU too. Cause you know, the Phoenix and San Diego thing, there's a lot of people that have family in both cities and like, there's a connect pretty strong connection between Phoenix and San Diego. So like that could even be a big thing too, but again, that, that would never eclipse U of A and ASU. Two schools hate each other. Dude. Yeah, like it's yeah. not even like the fake stuff, dude. It's like it's bad. Yeah, you go the message boards, which I spend a lot of time on trying to figure out more gossip about realignment, and God, they hate each other. <laughs> Washington State will be our Wyoming now. <laughs> 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 like that's gonna be where you socks you have to go to complain about the shitty road trip you gotta make. Yeah. You gotta go to fucking Pullman. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well go to Idaho. Damn. No, I think uh, maybe, dude, is the question is is like I don't want anybody else to come with San Diego State. I want to go solo. I'd like them to have tw- eleven or twelve teams if UCLA was to stay for a miracle, but. If I if they had to take someone, who who would you guys? We've I know we discussed this weeks back, but now with the information you have, you got to kind of consider who's actually a likely invitee too. You know, so who on the that we that has a chance would you want to see come with San Diego State? Is it still UNLV for you, James? Yeah, yeah, it's still UNLV for me. Yeah, look, I know their whole athletic department is trash right now, but. You know, they've, they've got their stadium situation settled, even though it's not ideal, but it's still like a cool stadium. We went and it had a good time and it wasn't super crowded, but it's still like a good environment. And it's obviously a cool road trip. And, and I think their academics are improving and they actually have a medical school. So like that's I think they're a good match, but you just have to that's kind of like a long game. You got to kind of look long term with them and like the TV market they bring and stuff like that. So that's still my my choice. Uh, I'm I'm with that. I'm along the same lines. UNLV, they they do bring a little bit to the table in terms of what's left, you know, because I don't think Pac-12 is ever going to be able to poach like a Kansas or, you know, maybe a Texas Tech away from Big 12. I, I think all the Big 12 teams seem to be locked in to they're not going to jump ship. So UNLV, I, I'd be I'd be cool with that. I think if the Big 12 were to expand and to invite SDSU, I would say UNLV as well. I think that would be a, a great fit. Or Boise, 
you know, they're, they're a little far up there, but Pac-12, Boise has no chance, right? UNLV probably has a much better chance than a Boise. You guys don't have any of that, like, fuck you guys, see you later. <laughs> I it. You didn't thing going on? Not not with UNLV, like, because they've never... I, I, I definitely, all that Rebel <laughs> Robert shit. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's Boise. I can't wait for the invite, because, you know, Boise thinks they're owed it. <laughs> So I can't wait to rub it in Boise's face, but no, not with UNLV. I, I, I always, it's like a fun rivalry, rivalry for me. I enjoy like the basketball games at the, the peak of the rivalry. Those basketball games are so much fun. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, to me, that, that was like a good nature, like fun rivalry. I mean, there's a lot of shit talking and stuff still, but it, it wasn't like, I hate you. It was just like, man, I want to beat you guys so bad. Cause you know, we're better than you. And, I mean, I I would just want UNLV strictly for that fact, right? For the road trips every other year, going to the basketball games over there every every year, you know, football every two. Which did you guys see next year? We we don't. I I sent you guys a text earlier today talking about next year's road games is Oregon State, Hawaii, Colorado State. We don't play Las Vegas next year in football, man, because we're oh they got rid of divisions, got rid of divisions. So yeah, we get them in twenty four. So that's kind of a bummer. I forgot all about that. But they, they make for a fun travel partner, you know? They, they absolutely do. I mean, not that you ever need an excuse to go to Vegas, but to watch your team play, that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, but it's fun watching your team play in another team in Vegas, too, dude. Going in- <laughs> <laughs> Who would you want them to see at, Dan? I mean, dude, I'm kind of... I wouldn't mind going to Dallas, dude. And, like, that's I think that would be a fun road trip as well. Yeah, um, they have tons of money. I know it's a limited, like a private school, but but it's in a pretty big market. I know they're obviously they're going to say the same thing that people always say about San Diego in the market, but pretty interesting history, tons of money, good facilities, a, rec- a great recruiting area. Um, Sounds familiar. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, the thing is, you wouldn't need Vegas to get to recruit Vegas, but getting Dallas in here would be good. Yeah, be a recruiting, recruiting spot. Yeah, I, I've kind of I used to be dead set against them just because they're a, a small private school, but I, I've kind of come around, kind of like with dancing. I still prefer UNLV, but like I've come around to SMU as I, I can recognize the advantages that it would have. You know, adding a, a school from Dallas, Texas, and, and being able to recruit Texas even more than we do already. 